the long form of IGBT is insulated gate bipolar transistor. So IGBT basically there is two types of IGBT, which is a built-in diode IGBT and a non-built-in diode IGBT. So according to the part number, this IGBT is H20R1203 and this IGBT has built-in diode and this IGBT G30N660. So this IGBT doesn't have any diode built-in inside. So these two, everything is the same, everything is the same, the same board. But here, from this part number, there's a built-in diode. This one doesn't have any built-in diode. So the testing is a different. So basically, the IGBT, uh, this data ship is the voltage rating 1200 voltage and 20 ampere. So IGBT is 3 GB, positive voltage uh, between 4 to 8 voltage. To drive the gate so this is a general a trigger voltage IGBT is at light capacitor so the first pin is gate the second pin is collector the third pin is emitter so from from gate to collector you should have reading capacitor gate to emitter you should have capacitor reading from emitter to collector, you should have diode reading because of this is diode building. But for this one, 30 and 60, the voltage is 600 voltage, the ampere is 50 ampere. So same goes to trigger by positive voltage. IGBT is trigger by the positive voltage. Uh, generally, 4 to 8 volts to turn on and off uh, the IGBT. So same goes to this IGBT. From the gate to emitter, you should have capacitor reading. From the gate to collector, you should have capacitor reading. From emitter to collector, there must be open. There is no diode here. Collector to emitter, there must be open. So we're going to test using a digital multimeter, which is can use capacitor testing so I'm going to select the capacitor testing mode here already select here is nano far so here is I already select nano far anything the capacitor digital multimeter you can use as long as your tester is reading the capacitor so after you selecting capacitor testing from the K2 emitter, you should have capacitor reading. This is going to be very small nanofarad or pingofarad. So right here, 1.01 .01 nanofarad K2 emitter. Okay, K2 collector 1.08 nanofarad. For emitter to collector, you should have diode reading. You select on diode. Emitter to this diode reading. Forward bias diode reading. The reverse bias uh, current block. So reverse bias, there is no reading for the diode. So this is good collision. So this is a good IGBT. If both way is short, that means your IGBT is already damaged. Okay. For the next one, 30 and 60. From K to emitter, you should have Capacitor reading, sorry, I'm going to select capacitor, nanofarad, gate to emitter, you observe in multimeter, 1.77 nanofarad, gate to collector, 0 0.92 nanofarad, gate to collector. So, from here to here, capacitor reading, from here to here, capacitor reading, but from here to there, 
you select on diamond you should not get any reading from here both way because of there is no diode here must be open circuit you shouldn't get any reading this is just like a MOSFET we are testing but RGBD the trigger voltage is 4 to 8 voltage MOSFET is normally a 3 to 8 voltage so the multimeter only uh, produce only 3 voltage so your RGBT cannot be triggered because of the voltage supply from multimeter is not enough voltage so this is how we test using digital multimeter Okay, now we are going to use analog multimeter here. If analog multimeter, you select on times 10 here, times 10. So, with diode built in RGBT, if you are using analog multimeter, from here, emitter to collector, you should get diode reading. So, emitter, black, black leg collector really you should have diode reading okay you observe on multimeter here oh, remember before you make testing RGBT always discharge always discharge okay from emitter to collector diode reading from collector to emitter you shouldn't get any reading because of this is reverse bias of diode so this is good condition but from here gate to emitter must be open circuit because of this only can read capacitor tester so analog multimeter you shouldn't get any reading from here to here gate to emitter you should not uh, you should not move this should not move for analog multimeter the black leak is positive flow so K2 emitter should not have any reading see nothing is moved here so this must be open so this is good because only between these two only carry capacitor so K2, K2 emitter K2 emitter open K2 collector open k2 emitter open k2 emitter open but emitter to collector only diode only this way we move the multimeter using analog multimeter to testing rgbt okay for the next one so for this one cannot read anything because there is no diode here so before you testing you must discharge there is no uh, diode building for this RGBT so as I say as I said earlier RGBT is test like capacitor they will only have capacitor reading so analog multimeter we cannot read any capacitor because this capacitor reading is a very small reading just like the first uh, digital multimeter we are using uh, just like 1.0 something nanofarad so 1.0 something nanofarad for analog multimeter we cannot make uh, we cannot measure so from without diode building activity k2 emitter is open should not have any reading should not display here uh, i mean should not move uh, this multimeter indicator here So K to emitter, no. K to collector, no. Emitter to collector, no. Collector to emitter, no. So we're going to test practically. So K to emitter, nothing. K to collector, nothing. 
emitter to collector nothing collector to emitter uh, there is already a little bit because of just now we already charged to trigger by uh, positive flow here so by right it must be discharged and trigger you should not get any reading so collector to emitter open emitter to collector open gate to emitter open gate to collector open so nothing is moved with a good condition of IGBT without built in diode so this is a very accurate if you are using a capacitor tester to test IGBT